Daddy. Welcome back to your favorite cooking show on the internet. It's Blender Time. Now today, guys, we have a special guest, all right? Can you guys put your hands together for Mr. Wiggles? Now, me and Mr. Wiggles go back a long, long time. We've known each other for ages. Isn't that right, Mr. Wiggles? <laughs> it's all right, guys. Mr. Wiggles just had to take a very small break. He'll be back in a moment. So you need a 3D creature. Start with a cube, add some subdivisions, and start modeling. Now, if you want to make your own completely custom monster for your own short film, make sure to check out the video in the description as I go into a lot more detail about that. <laughs> Next, we have to shoot our footage, so here are some tips to keep in mind. Some of the best horror out there don't actually show the creature until the last minute. It's not what you show, but what you imply. So showing the creature doesn't actually have to be the main focus of your short film. I'll go now. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, sorry, hold on. <laughs> and because we're working in 3D, we want to record our camera details for each shot. Things like our shutter speed, aperture, focal length, and all that jazz. I'm not, no, I'm not doing it again, he's gonna bite my head off. Now that we have our footage shot and our monster ready to go, we can put it all together. Ooh, time to bake. Now, like many of the Blender tutorials online, we have to give a shout out to the GOAT of Blender tutorials, Ian Hubert. He did a great breakdown on motion tracking in Blender. Make sure you guys check that out because we're going to do a very quick recap. In Blender, go into the motion tracker tab, input your footage, click set scene frames and prefetch. Control click to add some tracking markers into your scene. Or you can click auto detect features to create a bunch of tracking markers. Adjust the settings to match. Next click track in either the forward or the backwards direction. Filter those bad tracks by going to clean up, filter tracks and then delete those tracks. Repeat those steps and continue tracking. Lastly, click Solve Camera and see how accurate your solve was. Next, click Set Background and set up tracking scene. Now, if everything goes according to plan, you should have a camera set up in your scene. Reposition your camera to match your footage's perspective. Now, we have two options for lighting. As a professional, you probably want to use a HDRI to capture the environment around your object and then use that to light your scene. But luckily, we're not professionals. What we're going to do is we're going to recreate the same lighting setup that we shot on the day. For example, I knew this scene was very dramatically lit with harsh lights pointing down on the creature. So, in Blender, that's what I did. I put a harsh light above our creature at a floor underneath. Well done, now you've created a hideous creature that's tracked into your scene. If you haven't noticed already, we're not professionals, so we're going to export this bad boy as a PNG sequence. I'm proud of that statement. Jump into the free version of Fusion because, you know, it's actually free. Somebody. And then add in your base footage as well as your monster render layer. To merge both together, press Control Space to bring up the effects menu and search for a merge node. Chuck your base footage into the yellow input, aka the background, and your creature into the green input, aka the foreground. Now here's four tips to blend that footage into your creature. What? Now to avoid ruining those edges as we're doing a lot of color correction, we need to add in a divide node and a multiply node. Basically this protects the original alpha shape of our creature. You want the divide node before any of these color corrections and the multiply node at the end. Color. Now we can adjust the color and the gamma of our monster. Add in a color corrector node and a curves node. Now it becomes a bit of a magic game at this point, but we want to match the saturation, the blacks, the midtones, and the whites of our monster layer so it blends into the footage. Now this is something you should probably do in Blender by changing the aperture of your camera, but if you haven't done that like I haven't, you can chuck in a lens for it. <laughs> Lastly, if there's anything in the foreground that needs to be masked out, we can mask that out using a polygon. I've linked a tutorial in the description about how to mask foreground objects, so check that out. Add on a color grade and some noise, and now we have a fully CG character in our short. Isn't that right, Mr. Wiggles? Yeah? You want some brownies? Yeah? <laughs>